All right, I'm Walt Tanner. I'm Sarah Ellen Edwards. And we are back with the Capstone Cast Part Two uh, of our COVID-19 series. So uh, we are heading into our next season. So stick around and here is part two of our conversation. All right. What about your routine? So my routine is I am waking up a little bit later than normal during school. I was waking up at like 5.30 because I need to get up and get ready and have a moment before the children get up. I don't like to be woken up by children. I probably, right. probably one of my least favorite things in life. And so everybody sleep until closer to seven now, which is really nice. Yeah. And um, I am getting up at 6.30. And so usually I get up and get my clothes on and I listen because Beck comes out of his room like, like like he has no medicine in him obviously when he wakes up and so he like can like slip and fall on the floor like i just imagine the guy the the big thing at the car dealership that's going like this that's him literally that is him i uh for there was a week where i was convinced we were going to go to the er because he nearly missed hitting his head on the wall like that that much but every morning so i listened for him to be up and then i intercept him and then i kind of get him to the kitchen and we watched some random whatever on YouTube. Like the day after all the tornadoes, we watched two hours of tornado videos. I'm not kidding you on YouTube. Nice. Away. We don't normally watch for two hours, but so usually he, he gets up and I deal with him. If Jeff is going to work, he's usually gone before this happens. If not, I let him sleep in a little bit. And then uh, usually Ellery wakes up and then Anna wakes up. And then we just have a list called first things. And so at a certain point in the morning, I just go, hey, everybody, it's time to do your first things. And they know that means you got to have clothes on. You got to eat breakfast. You got to make your bed. You got to get your room cleaned up. If you've been playing in it that morning, you got to brush your teeth. And, and then I will say, okay, I'll set a timer. And first things have to be done by this time. And then we're starting school. And so it doesn't matter that it's spring break this week because mama can always find work. And we have work every day. We've there you go. Every day. It's always we something. have on routine. We don't work on Saturdays and Sundays. Because Jeff is off Saturdays and Sundays, and so I got back up every one of those days. But um, we work every day. And so we usually just work, work, work all morning, starting about 9-ish, and then we're done by 11. And if you're not done by 11, it rolls to the afternoon. That's sad times for you, not for me. Um, 11, we leave and go pick up our free lunch at the school. I'm going That's into true. your old stomping grounds. We go pick up at Malden High School. Whoop, whoop. And Ellery tells them some random fact about her day, and they just go, uh-huh. <laughs> um and then we come home we eat watch a show go outside for recess we usually we kick that off with a family walk and then we go stay outside for like another hour after that and then we come in for quiet time which is how we're really surviving this if you are not enforcing some quiet time in your home that is what you need to introduce into your schedule quiet time means every kid goes to a separate space some people are napping no one naps in my house <laughs> Um, you have to stay in your room. You can come out to TT. That's it. I don't even want to know if you come out to TT. Don't tell me. I don't want to hear about it. Um, Beck does not currently have a door because he lost that privilege. So he does not stay in his room very well, but he will sit either if I'm reading on my bed or if I'm reading on the couch or whatever, he'll usually stay right there and play Legos for two hours or something and, or sure. read or whatever. But yeah, you play in your room for two hours quietly and when that's over if you stayed in there the whole time you get a piece of candy and then by then it's about four and they either can play inside or outside we eat at five o'clock i know it's really early but it's what our bodies have been used to doing for years hey five. Not hating them, but we're early eaters too yeah and then we go either back outside if it's nice all of us together or we play something inside all together and then it's bath time about 6 30. take them baths everybody gets to take a nice long 30 minute bath just soak it in man and we start putting kids to bed at 7 30 and 8 and then jeff and i watch a show and then go to bed and that's been our routine all so, right what are you watching what's your show right now uh right now uh we've already watched tiger king i watched that when i had the flu i just like jeff i can't wait on you i watched it in like 24 hours oh, the whole man. Thing. could not i knew when they said florida and i saw his face and then they said oklahoma I was like, I'm in, but what sealed it is when they went to Myrtle Beach. I was like, I'm done. I endorse this show. Done. Wait, 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 wait. So, we have just listed like five things that we are don't endorse, but you're well, telling I endorse Tiger King. Well, then I'm going to say that 
Cast and Cast does not uh, endorse Tiger King and hire for murder plots. Yeah, I agree. She definitely, oh, this was, I did ask some friends, like, to say, like, give me some things that we can talk about. And the only person who gave me things to talk about said that they wanted to know, where do we fall on Did She Kill Her Husband? Did she kill her husband or did she I not? I haven't watched it. Well, Heather, what in the world? You have got to be educated on the things of your flock. And I your flock not, knows this. Not educated in Tiger King. I didn't even know. I was like, I thought it was like a spoof. Like, I was like, this guy isn't real. Because the way everybody kept talking about it, they called me like he was Ron Burgundy and all this stuff. I was like, oh, it's fake. But apparently it's real. And um, no, I have not watched Tiger King. Uh, well, you need to. You need to. You just need to be educated. It's a documentary. It's educational. Okay. It? Um, it, I, I had never heard about it, but I was listening to a podcast and they were like, when we heard it advertised, we we're like, God, it sounds like a podcast episode that we listened to. So it was like on a documentary slash true crime podcast as like a one episode. And they said when the episode finished, they had all these questions and the show has like answered all their questions. We well, so, have a whole now Tiger, Tiger King podcast of itself. Oh, does it have its own podcast? Yeah. No, oh, I didn't know. I have not been a good podcast listener because I do that in the car. I just heard it on the radio. Oh, I'm not in the car, so I don't listen to podcasts very much. Um, so where I stand is she definitely killed her husband. She either fed him to the tigers or put him in that septic tank thing for sure. She did it. I All don't right, trust either. I don't trust anyone on that show, but it was like a good lesson on why we don't do drugs. On why we well, don't mess know, with wildlife. And why we, why we should, what we can learn from this. Yes. <laughs> what, what can we learn from this? Um, Jeff and I are watching Ozark and I feel the same way about it. I literally, every night we watch, I look at Jeff and I'm like, I am never going to stray. I am never going to try to get one point off center because you're just watching this without knowing anything about the plot. It is just a giant tumbleweed of lies that just grows and grows and grows and I mean I just it's like dang I'm not even really like impressed with the lies like I'm not like oh they're gonna come out of this one I'm like somebody's gonna die for that that's all that's gonna make it better somebody's gonna have to die for that so and you can't watch it it doesn't it won't work for you right I'm sorry you can't you're not permitted um I have to cover Jeff's eyes sometimes so, yeah, um, you know, away, you know, my saying it's easier to stay away from temptation than resist sin. So, that's right. So, you can't watch Ozark if you want a plot summary. I'll give you a plot summary. Um, we finally got Netflix, and so now we've got Amazon Prime and Netflix. And so, Tiger King was my first show on Netflix. Very exciting. Um, all right, next question. I already know the answer to this a little bit because I know you. You gotten into any new projects or picked up any new habits lately? And I mean, good habits. I don't mean like drugs or anything. I need a new habit waking up at five o'clock in the morning. Um, no, now we are building a chicken coop. So that is our, that has kind of been our, our spring break. So I went ahead and did the foundation and then Monday they painted everything. And then Tuesday we uh, built it up. And then last night we uh, started putting some of the screen around it. So trying to That sounds like a nice consolation prize for Dollywood. Dolly would approve. Right. Dolly would approve. Chip Gaines has approved as well. Um, and so anytime I can bring Chip Gaines to the podcast, you know, that's a win. And Sarah's going to roll her eyes. Right. So anyway, so yeah, so we're working on that. Hoping maybe another week and a half. If we keep working at it, uh, it'll be done. So we'll see. We planted our garden. The whole thing. It's gigantic. No surprise. It gets bigger every year. Well, hey, but, it's a deal. We're about to be self-sufficient. I got eggs. You get groceries. Oh, listen. W there is a whole compound plan already amongst our friends. Oh, you're in because you're the preacher. I get to come along because I'm a teacher and Jeff is a nurse. And we're going to be over the garden. Uh, Kristen Allen is really like compound queen. We need yeah. her compound queen. But yeah, there's yeah, a whole she, thing. She's from Utah. So, you know, she's got some experience in that. She's got people who are about comedy. Leanne is like, I don't even watch the news because, sorry, Leanne Bentley like knows everything that's happening. So I'm just like, Leanne, <laughs> what do I need to know today? Because she's going to tell us. Um, I 
my new habit is to rest in the afternoon and I'm cooking a lot. I already did cook, but I'm cooking a lot and I'm making like meals that maybe I would only make for special occasions we're having on the rig. Tonight we're going to have shrimp and grits because why not? All we got is time. Hey, love time. shrimp and grits. Betsy does Paula Deans. Yes. Now there's not good for you, but butter, bacon. Um, That's why we're taking family walks, friend. <laughs> also, I said I was going to start doing it and I haven't done it yet, but I saw somebody on Instagram that said she's at, now she is a worker outer. I am not a worker outer, but she said she added to her routine, like flipping a deck of cards so that they went everywhere in a room and then squatting to pick each one up. She said that her dad knew somebody who was 90 years old and did that every day of their life and kept him healthy. So. Or I could just tell my kids, hey, go in that room and rip all the books off and then let me go clean them up. Yeah, but cards are lighter to pick up. No, that sounds like a horrible idea. <laughs> um, I don't think I really have any new habits. Uh, I've been, I am making gluten-free banana bread. Like, it's my job. I wish it was my job. We get bananas from the school district in the lunch, and my kids don't eat them. Only Jeff eats bananas. We've gotten bananas? I know. Listen, y'all get jicama, you fancy people. What is that? Uh, Betsy sent it to us in a text yesterday. It's supposed to be, like, in the carrot kind of family. Yeah, we get different things. My kids have yet to get a chocolate milk, and they're really sad about it. We did, like, the first week, but now it's all been white. Yeah. Um, so they get bananas, and they go bad pretty fast. Like, you really need to eat them the day that we get them. And Jeff eats a banana a day, but he can't keep up because we're getting free bananas today. <laughs> so I've been making banana bread and freezing it. And that's the only new yeah. habit I have. And we got a bunny. I've heard about, was, oh, I saw a bunny. I saw a picture from Yeah. Best. Who it was in the works before COVID. Yeah. Your name is Corona? I'm in. It was in the works before COVID-19 coronavirus, Rona. Um, and it was a driveway deal and it was somebody we knew. So yeah, I went and picked him up last night. His name's Kiva. I named him after my friend's father, whom I love dearly. And I always said, if I had another boy, I wanted to name him Kiva. Cause the story goes that it means shelter in Hebrew. It was... Don't come in fussing. Just don't, don't do that. Don't do that. It's going to mess up the editing. Okay. Um, during World War II, I think I might be going too far back during the war. The war, the it, great war. I think it was, it would be my friend's grandfather fought in that war and met this man whose name was Kiva, which in Hebrew means a shelter. And he was not really cut out for war, but Kiva was like his protector, his shelter. And so when her grandfather had her father, he named him after his war buddy, Kiva. Cool. So, so I love that name. They haven't used it. And I was like, I am doing this out of the utmost respect. I even like message him on Instagram. I was like, this is out of respect. I love your father. He passed away a few years ago. And I want to name my rabbit Kiva because it's a boy. And they said, yes. My kids picked the middle name, Lightning. <laughs> Kiva, Lightning Edwards, the bunny. So, no, that's all right. Yeah, that's like Trevor naming his, his fish Flash. Right, <laughs> exactly. I thought it was, they were going to name it like Furball, but Lightning. All right, next question. What is getting you through this? Is it the that you have work to do all the time? That you uh, never have ideas? For me, it's the light at the end of the tunnel. So for you, you say, oh, I don't, you know, we'll be in this forever. Uh, for me, it's... I that will be in it forever. I just said, when's it going to end? That's forever. Okay. Um, no, I mean, I adapt, pivot and adapt. So, I mean, we'll keep doing what we do. And then when we get out, hopefully we've picked up new things that makes us better at what we do, makes us better Christ followers, makes us better disciple makers. And um, hopefully the things that we learn will apply once we get out of this to our quote unquote new normal. And um, so, yeah, so I guess I'm looking forward to the new normal that hasn't come yet. Got it. Um, what's getting me through? I really think we, we love routine around here. I, I love routine. My kids thrive in routine, even though they might push back. Yeah, most kids do. Um, so the routine is what's getting me through. Yeah. Um, okay, we talked about this a little bit. Any fun TV binges, podcasts, or books? Any of that? Uh, so here's the deal. We aren't those people who get to, you know, these other people who are like, oh, we're binge watching this because, you know, 
I mean, my kids are still living very full and active lives. And um, so pretty much we are same routine. We watch um, once the kids go to bed and we figure, you know, clean the kitchen and do all the stuff that we have to do as parents. Um, we just watch an episode of, of uh, Blacklist. We've been watching through that again. So you're that, rewatching Blacklist. We re we're rewatching it. There's so much TV and you're rewatching something. Yeah, so we watched like till season mid season five and we stopped. So now we literally went back all the way to the beginning and we're almost through where we're stopped where we we're right where we stopped. So that's where we're why at. did you stop? Life we had oh okay lose our practice or we just had things and we just kind of got out of the routine. So we just decided that's what we were watching. So we rewatch things, but like we have to have exhausted. Yeah. What's out there? No, there's other stuff that's on our list. Like we haven't even watched the second season of Jack Ryan and we have all these other things to watch. But Dang, I mean, yeah. so we're not sitting and watching like TV. We're I mean, so for us, like all you are like, oh we don't you know, we've run out of things on Netflix to watch and that's just not our story and our gig. So so really yeah. we haven't I've had less time to read and less time to listen to podcasts. Like you said, we're not in the car and I may get an hour or hour and a half to watch a show before I crash. Well, because you basically had to reinvent the whole way you work. Right. Interesting. Um, these other people who are furloughed or, you know, they're just like, oh, we're not going to work. And I was like, that's not our story. Yeah. Jeff's schedule has changed. We still don't watch much TV during the day. Um, it's just at night. And now we both got the flu. So we both had our own little binge situation that we were doing. We also both watch shows not with each other. So once our, the normal routine is like Jeff would come home from work and we'd kind of chat for like 15 minutes and then we'd each go to our different corners because we're introverts and then like we'd come back together in an hour or so and so now once the kids go to bed we're still doing that a little bit like okay I'm gonna go over here and do something you go over there and do something and then <laughs> come back together I'm trying to use some of that time to read I have a zoom book club my last book club of my well-read black girl is tomorrow and so I had to read my book for that but I've been trying to read more I definitely it's cutting down on my reading because I read at a lot of appointments which we're not going to any appointments right now um, and I listen to books in the car, not in the car. I listen to podcasts in the car, not in the car. The only podcast I'm keeping up with is the podcast because, um, you got our friends. Yeah. I mean like besties. I, so, and they're still pumping it out, man. They're still meeting in their office, six, six feet apart. They're putting that <laughs> podcast content out for us. Hey, well, this is our first, you know, <clears throat> our it's fine. First we don't make money off this. It's good. No. All right. Have you started following any new accounts on social media? Okay, you need right now, get your phone and I want you to go to Instagram and you need to start following Dave Barnes music. You're gonna know him Dave because- Dave Barnes. Yes. Yeah, I know Dave Barnes. Follow I him. I know him, but I know about him. Like your besties. He reposted my kid this week on his story. So I told Anna she was famous now. He does all these hilarious characters with Snapchat filters in his feed. I literally will have to watch them four times because I will start laughing so hard. I cannot breathe and I cannot hear what else he's saying. So I have to rewatch them four times just so that I can get the whole thing of it. He's like, I don't even know what I'm going to say when I start doing it sometimes. Like it just comes. Like, Dave Barnes music. Dave Barnes music. Start following him. He's hilarious. Also, I love his music, but I can't decide which one I like more. Is it that he's funny or is it, is it music? I, can't, I don't know. <laughs> Um, I really, that's about it. I was doing really good, not spending money for a while. And then I was like, um, I haven't filled my gas tank up and right. Jeff did go fill it up for me one night, but it had been, I hadn't filled it up since we got home because we're not going anywhere, going nowhere. So I'm like that money that I'm not using on gas and the three different group therapies my kids are in and the OT therapy and the equine therapy is going to a little bit of retail right. therapy for mama. So I have started something new since we started. You know, I started the whole watershed. Um, yeah. So I've been following more design and um, creative stuff uh, with that. But kind of this COVID-19 kind of put a smash into that. Uh, I was going to be posting stuff to social media through watershed, yeah. that good stuff, but no time. You have an Instagram account? Watershed, yeah. Watershed.co has its own. Um, Instagram, Facebook, 
but there's nothing on it yet because I haven't done the website because I don't have any free time anymore because my kids go to school all the time. And when I'm not you got 53 followers though, for I mean, no content. Yeah. With no content. That's the thing of like, I was going to start doing quotes and pictures and all this design stuff. But uh, my side hustle kind of got pushed to the side with this whole COVID. Yeah. Um, I think it'll come around because some people are treating this like a time to just renovate their homes. So they got, you know, you they got can, Trump money. They got Trump money laying around now. Yeah. So. We just got ours. Have you gotten your Trump money? Yeah. I didn't think we had it, but when I went to do our, like just balance the checkbook and everything this morning, I saw it there. It was nice. Yeah. We still haven't gotten some of our tax money back yet. So Jeff's like, well, why don't y'all get on that? We don't have direct deposit. <laughs> so we're waiting on a check. We have direct deposit. We got our state back. We got our Trump money back, but we haven't gotten our federal back. Yeah. So, so we're still waiting. I think we're waiting. We're going to be waiting for a while to print, you know, 300 million checks. Okay. Um, so you haven't really changed your life, but have you introduced any new snacks? Snacks? Yeah. Like any new snacks to your quarantine routine? No. You still with your old faves, Dr. Pepper? Reese's no, I haven't, I haven't drank a Dr. Pepper in years. Years? Well, not years. I was I like... Drink. The only time I would drink Dr. Pepper is when I went out. Okay. We don't buy Dr. Pepper. Jeff and I did buy Dr. Pepper, and we each bought a Dr. Well, I guess he bought two. I don't know. I can't send Jeff to the store because he comes in with surprises, which I love, but yes. don't really need, you know? The um, last Dr. Pepper I had was when we went to the pop-up camping. <laughs> Oh, that wasn't that long ago. Yeah, I mean, it was a month ago. Um, so we each got like a 12 pack of Dr. Pepper. I only, I really only drink like half of one a day because it really, I, I'm old and I need to drink water or I'm going to have a migraine. That's how that Wait, goes. You drink half of a Dr. Pepper? Yeah. I'm That's weird. Cool. It's fine. I can have not fizzy soda and lukewarm water. It's how I live my life. Okay. That's like saying, Hey, I drink half a coffee and I'm going to drink it tomorrow. I, want to it. I, I, I sometimes do that. When Jeff forgets to make the coffee, um, I just drink, I just heat up what's left in the pot. Oh, that's horrible. Sarah Ellen, come on now. I think that I might make it longer in the um, zombie apocalypse than you will because I can drink day old coffee and you can't handle that. That's horrible. That's a horrible idea. I would make more coffee. I mean, we do make more coffee. Um, okay, I have discovered, how do you feel about dill pickles? Because this might gross you out. Oh, well, I have discovered dill pickle potato chips made by the Oots brand. I've heard. I've heard of such. They're delicious. I Eli, do not share them with anyone. Eli likes dill pickles, and I think he may have had some. Or well, maybe Eli's my favorite tanner. He may be. He, he, he's grown up. Like, looking at him in, like, clips of things that Betsy has shown, he's, like, so tall. He's filled out. He hasn't really filled out, but his hair has filled out. Well, his hair's filled out, but, like. My brother saw a picture of him while we were camping, and he's like, is Eli wearing a wig? I was like, it's, what? like, really dark, too. That is, like, his little. Are you jealous a little bit? No. I used to have thick hair like that. Mm. Um, all right. Now we're going to get spiritual here. All right. And on a spiritual note, and we'll be all done. Um, what, where have you seen God moving, and, like, do you feel like you have heard like something that he's told either you specifically or you as a representative of our church and community and anything like that? Um, well, a part of it is I think we're a little set up differently in the people we attract just because we've kind of been planning for this for a long time in the sense of we're decentralized. We're not dependent on a program. We're not dependent on things, but to, we've tried to equip people. Um, so kind of my thing is like, you know, nothing has changed. We're still missionaries. We're still disciplers. We're still evangelists. We're still doing all that stuff. Um, and I think this is just basically pure. It's that fire that's going to purify us. Mm -hmm. um, and so my prayer is that we're going to come back stronger. That the church is going to come back stronger um, in that, oh man, we really didn't, we really knew how to read scripture. We could listen to the Holy Spirit. We could find that mission. We could, you know, we could disciple our kids and we could lead them through communion. And, um, and, and so I think that's for me, the biggest thing of like, God, I think God's using this to strengthen his church um, for whatever's coming next. I agree. I, um, I feel like I'm having lots more conversations with my children 
than I did before, even though we would do devotions and talk about things. And I, it is funny that like the whole mission of Capstone specifically, and I know other churches carry this mission too, but to be missionaries wherever we are at any time, it's like we're living it out right now. And so that is God ordained. As my mom would say, it's a God thing. And then I'm quick to go, mom, it's all a God thing. It's all his thing. No, go away. No, why are you talking to me when there is another parent in this house you can talk to? This is real life. Hashtag real life. Okay, I need y'all to go. I'm, if you want to pet the bunny, you got to leave me alone. Well, the in a bunny minute. is now new. Um, it's new bait. So but it's what it was all about to start with. You may not have any more lipstick. You can be quiet, okay? Shh. Okay, so um, I, I found more time to pray. Um, I feel like I found more quiet, even with my kids being home. And um, I don't have anxiety. Like I know some people are having lots of anxiety, but that is, um, I'm not. And like, even if I can say, what if this never ends? And I still don't really have anxiety about it because I know that God knows what's going on. And that's like my motto for our family is I have no idea what's going on, but God knows what's going on. Right. I feel like that could be the world's model right now. I have no idea what's going on, but God knows what's going on. Isaiah, and guess who is the best equipped to handle this? The Lord. Isaiah 55. His, high, his ways are higher than our ways. There you go. So I don't think I've gotten a specific word, but um, just being more intentional with my children, it's, point, it's showing me how selfish I am because at some point every day, I'm like, I do not want to hear your precious voices anymore. And I'm like, I'm all they've got. I got to like rein it in, you know? So. Anywho, that's all I had on my list. That was 10 right. things. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I think that's it. You're like talked out. You're like, let's be done. I don't want to talk no, about I've actually got another Zoom. In oh, like I'm so sorry. Minutes. Oh, okay, well, get to your other Zoom. I hope it's the same. Um, <laughs> all right, well, let's, uh, let, let's send them out, Sarah Ellen. Ready? I don't know what we say. We're making it up as we go. Oh, else. so if you have thoughts, I don't know. Thoughts? If you have opinions about the things that we talked about and you want to tell them, tell us about them, uh, send them our way. I guess I need to revive our Instagram page. Hey, if you want us to have guests next time, because we can just zoom you. Oh, in we can. Minute, give us, uh, give us two people or a couple or somebody you like for us to maybe interview or you like to hear from. Uh, that would be fun. So, um, we'll do that. We were going to do a thing where I drove around with people and talked to them, but then we're not allowed to be that, yeah. like, that's not a sense. Not that a sense. Like, down real so. quick, so. All right. All right. Well, I'm Walt Tanner. Love and chicken grease. That's what I got. I'm Walt Tanner. I'm Sarah Ellen Edwards. All right. And this is Capstone Cat. Catch Cap. you later. That's what we're supposed to say. And we Ready? got One, practice. two, three. We'll catch you catch later. Catch you later. <laughs>